Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast, where we explore the world of innovation, creativity, and intellectual property. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from the successes and failures of others, so you can protect your inspired ideas. I love working with small business owners and watching as they succeed, as they break through great barriers and watching them learn and grow. And that's what I get out of doing this. I love working with you, the small business owner. Now, before we get started, once again, I'm an attorney. This is a podcast, not a legal consultation. And this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I'm not providing legal advice and nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client relationship. So now let's dive into the world of inspiration and innovation. Join me on this journey as we explore the power of inspiration and how to turn your ideas into reality. We're on week two of the 13-week journey to learn how to leverage your inspiration. And in this one, we are focusing on the provisional versus the non-provisional patent, the scams, the strategies, and so there are a lot of companies that have scammed inventors and small businesses over the years. I have helped some of the inventors who have been scammed by these businesses. Oftentimes, the well, the patent office will call these invention promotion scams. The Federal Trade Commission has shut down many of them after they took millions of dollars from investors and misled them about what they were getting in return for their hard-earned money and sometimes their life savings. So the FTC published two articles, and you can find links to these on the uh, on my podcast page and uh, at bgr.network. So one of them is they their article was how and quote invention promotion and quote outfit demoted the truth. And then a second one is they titled some invention promotion firms do nothing for you. So one of the reasons I'm addressing this when I'm talking about provisional patent applications is that provisional patent applications are limited and used by some companies to scam inventors. So knowing the limits of a provisional patent application, when it is a good or a bad strategy of, of your overall patent strategy will help you avoid people that are giving you bad advice and just trying to take your money. So a provisional patent application is a provisional means temporary. A provisional patent application is only temporary and it only lasts for one year. It never becomes a patent and you cannot renew a provisional application. The way it works in the patent office is provisionals are set up to get you in the door. Sometimes that's needed because you have a, a deadline, something where you need to get that provisional application in. As we've discussed before when we were talking about patent searches, uh, if there's a publication by somebody else before your filing date, then your patent can be invalid or rejected. If it's your publication and you're coming up right to that one year deadline from when you made a publication, you've got to get that patent application in before that one year deadline. And hopefully nobody else has published in the meantime. Um, so sometimes provisional patent applications are used to get into the patent office quickly. They have a low standard for filing in the patent office. And a low quality provisional application might be worthless and might actually jeopardize your patent rights. Provisional applications are not examined or necessarily accepted by the patent office, but they're only really acknowledged as filed. So all you really get from a provisional, a provisional patent application is a filing receipt saying, yes, we received this in the patent office. And that's it, they're done. They don't examine it, they don't grant it as a patent, 
It's, they just say, yes, we received it. I have seen some provisional, applica provisional patent applications where uh, because the way things uploaded the, and the images were downgraded, what was actually uploaded to the patent office wasn't readable. But they still got a filing receipt. Um, unfortunately, that recorded uh, provisional application didn't support anything because you couldn't actually read it. Um, now the other, so provisional is temporary and they call another type of application non-provisional. So those are not temporary. Now, if anyone from the patent office with any authority to change this, I would love to change the terminology, but it's been around so long, it'll probably never happen. So non-provisional patent applications get examined and can be granted as a patent. And standards for filing a non-provisional application are much higher than those of the provisional application. Now that doesn't mean you can you you can't file a low quality non-provisional application. It has to have claims, it has to have drawings and the it, there's more parts that have to mesh together. It's like a puzzle that has to be put together properly to be a proper patent application. Um, so as I said, provisional applications are never rejected, but about 90% of non-provisional applications receive at least one rejection. And often the reason to use a provisional as an application, as I've mentioned is the timing of your product launch or publication of your invention. For example, if you're going to a trade show or a conference or giving a presentation, um, sometimes uh, inventors are going to pitch their invention to investors. And uh, what you need to do is get a clear picture of your business plan for that invention, including when do you plan to launch your invention and if or if you plan to license your invention when do you plan to um, present it to the market for uh, licensing and with your invention with a clear plan of of when you need to do what you need to do so a provisional application actually prevents the starting date of the patent. So a patent term is 20 years from the filing date of the non-provisional. In, in some patent applications, you want that delay. In other patent applications, you don't want the delay. And you want to get a patent as soon as possible. Uh, one of the examples is in pharmaceutical applications, you want uh, what is typically, if, if you have a blockbuster drug, the last year of the patent term is extremely valuable because they've made it through all that regulatory stuff they have to go through. They've gotten doctors to accept it. They've gotten clients or uh, customers to recognize the brand, and they... If it works out for them, they may, may even be able to sell it over the counter so that the mass market can can buy their their medicine. And at that point, they can make the most money, and it takes them a long time. And as soon as that patent runs out, then generics come in. And so that last year, e even getting an extra month in pharmaceuticals, sometimes is worth a lot of money. Um, and even though there's a 20-year term, there are adjustments from the patent office. If the patent office takes too long to get your patent granted, if there's delays on their side, then you get extra time. So there are things to do to try to extend that. But in a lot of inventions, technology you expect is going to move on in a matter of maybe five or ten years. And so that first part 
is your most valuable. If you start with a provisional application, uh, your your you don't get in line at the patent office until you file the non-provisional. And that line in the patent office can be uh, anywhere from uh, just the, the, the standard line is somewhere between a year to three years before they even do their first review of your patent application. Um, as I mentioned, if you plan to license your invention to others, what you're going to want to do, this is the advice I've been told from successful inventors, is to build a business plan around that invention, understanding what does it cost to produce, uh, you know, per item, can get, actually getting quotes for mass producing it, and then you know, keeping those quotes, getting, going through the steps you would take if you were actually going to produce it, that reduces the risk for somebody who wants to license your invention. Uh, if you want to further reduce the risk, you actually produce it, put it in the marketplace, prove that people actually want to buy it, and that it holds up and you don't have all kinds of bad reviews. Um, so those are some of the, the tips when you want to license an invention instead of producing it yourself. Sometimes you need to produce it yourself to prove that it's the marketplace is going to accept it. For those who watch Shark Tank, they there are some people that come with, with the idea, but most of them come after actually having some sales because they've proven that somebody wanted to buy it. Um, so back to the provisional versus non-provisional. What I encourage you to do is write down when you expect to launch your invention or start promoting the, your um, licensing of your rights and share that plan with your patent attorney. That way you can talk strategy around that date and what is the best timing for your patent application and how it should go. So, thanks for joining me. I'm Wayne Carroll with Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast.